Hi guys, now we've learnt about Born Harbour cycles, we can tackle some exam questions. So what is the correct enthalpy change for the step labelled A on the Born Harbour cycle below? Then we're given our Born Harbour cycle, and we can see here that this is step A. So if you've watched this video carefully, you should remember that in Born Harbour cycles, the step that goes between the gaseous ions, so the Mg2 plus gas and the two Cl minus gases, through to the solid lattice is the lattice enthalpy. So the correct answer here will be A, and that gives us our one mark. Now we're told that the standard enthalpy change of atomization for chlorine is given by delta at H is 121 kilojoules per mole. What is the value of the enthalpy change in step B? Give the reasoning for your answer. So if we look up at step B here, we're going from having magnesium gas to having magnesium gas, so there's no change here, but we're going from having chlorine molecules to having just chlorine atoms separated. And the question asks us, what is the enthalpy change for this step? Well, you should remember that the enthalpy change of atomization is the energy required to make one mole of the atoms you're after. Whereas when we look at step B, what's happened is we've made two moles of the chlorine. So the enthalpy change will double because we're making two moles instead of one. So it's like the reaction is happening twice over. So the enthalpy change for step B is going to be given by 242 kilojoules per mole, because this is twice times the standard enthalpy change. The reasoning for our answer is what we've just discussed. So we could write something along the lines of that the standard enthalpy change of atomization gives the enthalpy change that forms one mole of gaseous atoms from the element standard state. We form two of these moles of gaseous atoms in step B, and so the enthalpy change will be twice the standard enthalpy change of atomization. For this question, you get one mark for correctly spotting that you should need to double the standard enthalpy change, and you'd get a second mark for stating that this is the reason. So now let's look at the next question. It says, given the data below, complete the Born Harbour cycle for cesium oxide. So then if we look at the table, we've got the atomization of cesium, the atomization of oxygen, the first ionization energy of cesium, the first electron affinity of oxygen, and the second electron affinity of oxygen. So here's the Born Harbour cycle they've given us, and we can see that we're forming cesium oxide, Cs2O. We'll start with the elements in their standard states, and we'll move up the Born Harbour cycle. So, in these first two steps, you can see, and should remember from the video, the first thing we do is atomization. We're turning the solid cesium into gaseous cesium atoms, and we're turning the diatomic molecules of oxygen into singular oxygen atoms. So it's your choice which one you atomize first in this intervening step. You would get the marks for both of them. Here, we're going to do cesium first. So we start off with two cesium solids, and then on this step, we're going to be left with two cesium gaseous. Then the oxygen stays what it is for this step because that will be atomized in the next step up. Moving round the cycle, we can then see that two electrons are stripped from each of the cesium atoms in its ionization, which is the first ionization of cesium for both of these atoms. And then in the next step, we're going to be giving one of these electrons to the oxygen in the first ionization. So after we've done that, the cesium is going to remain unchanged. So we're going to have two Cs plus gaseous we're going to have an oxygen which has gained one electron, so it's going to be O minus gaseous, and then we're going to have one electron left over, so that's E minus, and remember to include this. In our final step, we've got the second electron affinity of oxygen, 
And so this time we're going to be adding the second electron to the O minus ion, and then we'll be left with our gaseous ions we need for the lattice enthalpy step. So the final thing to write into the box is our two Cs plus gaseous atoms and our O now two minus gaseous atom. There's now a second part to this question where it asks us to calculate the lattice enthalpy for cesium oxide. So going back to our born harbour cycle, we'll remember that it's this step here which is the lattice enthalpy. So we're going to use the cycle to follow the other route to find this enthalpy change. We're going to go back along the second electron affinity, back along the first electron affinity, back on the first ionisation energy, and then down on both of the atomizations. And then finally, we're going to go along in the same direction as the enthalpy change of formation for cesium oxide. So let's start writing that out. We know that the lattice enthalpy is going to be the same as the sum of all of these energy changes, so we can write out that the change in lattice enthalpy standard is equal to, and now we're going down in energy, so we know we're going to be wanting to take a number away, take a positive number away, but we're also going against the second electron affinity, so we're going to be taking that away. So we get minus the enthalpy change associated with the second electron affinity, Ea2, and then that is for oxygen, just to make that clear. We're then going to move against the first electron affinity, so that's Ea1 for oxygen, and then after that, we're going to be moving against, so remember, whenever we're going in the opposite direction to these arrows, we need a minus sign for that enthalpy change. So this time we're moving against the first ionisation energy, so delta I1, and that is for cesium. Then after we've done that, we're moving against both of the atomization energies. Now remember here, or rather here, where we've atomized the cesium, there are two molecules of cesium. So firstly, let's take away the change in atomization for the oxygen, which is just the standard, but then we're taking away two times the standard enthalpy change for the atomization of the cesium because there were two molecules that we were atomizing and remember the standard enthalpy change results in there being one molecule here so we're fine for oxygen but we've got to double it for the cesium and then the final step we're at this point now is to then go with the standard enthalpy change of formation so we're going to add on the standard enthalpy change of formation for the cesium oxide. Now the next stage is just a case of carefully looking up all of the values you need from the table. Remembering so to include the signs carefully. So when we do the first electron affinity of oxygen we're going to have minus and minus. When we're doing this so with the second electron affinity of oxygen it's positive but with the first it's negative just include the signs all the way through so my advice to be when you're doing this intermediate step to put minus and then for the second electron affinity for the oxygen we're going to have plus 790 and all of the units are kilojoules per mole here, so we're not going to write those in, but we do need to remember to put it with our answer at the end. But so we've got plus 790. Then when we do the second electron affinity, we've got minus a minus 141. There's a mistake in the working above that we can fix now. As we made clear with the atomization of cesium, we've got two of the atoms that we're making, so we need to double this enthalpy change. The same applies for the ionization, so it should be two times here. Writing that in with the numbers is minus two times by 
plus 376. We've now also filled in the atomization of oxygen and the atomization of the cesium. And then finally, we've got a plus this time. So we're adding on the change in formation of the cesium oxide. And remember that plus is because we're going with this arrow. But as you'd expect, because there's a drop in energy, the enthalpy of formation is negative for cesium oxide. So we've got negative 83 in the brackets. And then when we plug all of this into our calculator to get our final answer, we get a final answer of negative 1,891. And our units, which are given to us in the table, which we then don't change, are kilojoules per mole. So let's look back through at where we would have got the marks for this question. So firstly, there were three marks here for filling in our empty Born Harbour cycle. So having each of these boxes completely correct is going to give us all three marks. Remember, you do need to include the electron. Then there are two marks for this section, which is a case of one for attempting the correct working of getting the, all of the right order of going through the enthalpy changes, and then a second for the correct answer and units. And then that's your five marks for this question all done. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.